asked them the question. He's like, truly is this the amount that you sold the land? He gave them a chance. He gave them both a chance. God he still, still in their sin of, of trying to separate their need from him, separate away. He still created that mercy and says, here's your chance. And that mercy is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ paid for those sins. You just have you have to t- come to Him. You have to come to Him. There's nothing else you can do. You can't right your wrongs by doing anything except for coming to Jesus Christ. And so, keeping that it's a different definition of what sin is, we have to continue to remind ourselves of that. And there's a. a um, So I'm going to tell you one quick story that um, I shared in the other past, in the other uh, group that I think will help us understand this. That he's not just trying to make people scared of him, as we're talking about. Um, um, and and I'll, I'll never forget this story. My, I was five or six years old, and I was at my granny's house. And, um, and if you've grown up around any little boys, um, you'll know that we make messes, and we uh, are just, like, we're crazy, and we make we do a lot of stupid things and break things. So I was, um, and I was one of those kids. I was at my granny's house. I tore up the lawn by playing sports. I, I would make messes, all that stuff that any normal kid would do. And my granny never got mad at me for it. Um, but she had a next door neighbor who was a grown man and not her grandson. And he would throw stuff on her lawn. And he would drive um, on the corner of her lawn and kill her grass and carelessly get into the driveway. Uh, he would cut, <laughs> cut his lawn clippings and just leave them out there and blow them on her side, uh, blow his leaves over and throw trash. Just little things that would not like terrorize her, but it was super annoying and disrespectful. So my, uh, my dad uh, had asked him, we'd asked him before to stop and, um, a few times. And so one day it happened again, my dad was like, well, I'm really going to talk to this guy. And we're walking, uh, we went to my granny's house, he wasn't there, wasn't home. So we're walking, we're about to go home. We're walking to our car, and he pulls up at the same time. My dad calls him over. They meet halfway, almost like this battle, you know. Like, Ding, wah, wah, wah. And so they, they meet halfway <laughs> in the yard, and he says, "Man, I've asked you before." And they start this conversation, saying, "Like, don't, don't do this. Like, why are you doing this? Stop doing this." And um, he, of course, is like, "How can you tell me what to do?" And so he snaps back. And then, of course, my dad's like. I'm protecting my, my mom, and then he snaps back, and then just escalates, and I'm really this little five, I don't know if it's back and forth, like, what is happening right now, and I'll never forget this, it, there was a, just a switch that flipped inside my dad, that he, his whole, his whole head, his whole head just turned red, and he started shaking uh, in anger, and almost, I felt like he was just shaking, just trying to hold himself back from going at this guy, my dad's 6'1", like 230, at the time, like, he's, he's a bigger dude, and this other guy was, I mean, he was a decent size, but, like, <laughs> didn't compare. It was just, like, just the fact of, they were about the same size, it was just the fact, my dad was so out, he was, like, I just, I looked in his face, and at five, I, like, it was the scariest thing I'd ever seen in my life. It was scarier than any uh, nightmare that I'd Sorry. seen in a movie, and it, it was the most scary thing I'd ever seen, and I was more afraid of my dad in that moment than ever in my life. But in that moment, I was five years old. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't logically think through my decision of what should I do in this moment. My all I did was jump behind my dad. 